When people talk about comedic fantasy, Terry Pratchett is, if not the first, at least one of the first authors that springs to mind. If you ask for other names, you might hear Robert Asprin or Christopher Moore, but last talked about is Dave Sim. Now, this isn't to say that Dave Sim is never talked about. While he is much more obscure now than in his heyday, he's still acknowledged by comic fans as a major part of comic book history. However, when we talk about him, it's usually either in how he paved the way for self-publishing and trade paperbacks, or how his increasingly controversial political and religious stances came to overshadow everything else about his Cerebus series. To do that topic justice, I would need to make a whole other video, or hell, a whole video series, but for the purposes of this video, I want to focus on a particular aspect of Cerebus that made it unique. The Cerebus was a self-published comic series, which meant that Dave Sim had final say on where its story would go, and where it went was usually... whatever whim Sim stumbled upon. Most story arcs of Cerebus can be summed up as Dave Sim finds a random topic that interests him and uses the comic as a means to explain it to the reader. Whatever plot occurs in these arcs are mostly just there to serve as a vehicle for Sim gushing about whatever new interest he developed. Uh, with high society, the interest is parliamentary government, with church and state, it's organized religion, with form and void, Ernest Hemingway, etc. etc. You get the picture. The reason I bring all this up is that The Truth is the first Discworld book crafted along similar lines. Yes, there is a story, but the main point of The Truth is simply for Terry Pratchett to gush about this new fascinating topic he's learned about, namely the printing press and newspapers. While Pratchett had done similar stories with moving pictures and soul music, those books were more centered on cramming as many reference-based jokes as could be managed into a basic end-of-the-world story. With The Truth, the stakes are much lower, and Sir Terry's tongue is no longer so firmly planted in his cheek. There is an earnestness to the truth that is missing in moving pictures and soul music, like a professor eager to teach his students the class's lesson. So, what is the truth? William de Word is a humble scribe in Ankh Morpork, who one day runs into a group of dwarves led by Ganilla Goodmountain. They've come to Ankh Morpork to make use of their new invention, Movable Type, and with William's help, the dwarves use their invention to create the Ankh Morpork Times, the first newspaper on the disc. Soon enough, the Times has gained a thriving readership, but all is not well. Not only have the Guild of Engravers started their own tabloid rag to muscle out the Times, but something suspicious is going down at the Patrician's Palace. And while the City Watch may be on the case, William believes that the people ought to know the truth, regardless of the Watch's warnings of public security. However, the truth may live closer to home than William thinks. How does the world of the truth work? The truth is an odd duck when it comes to series world building, since its ramifications can be filled for the rest of the novels, but the main cast never get their own book again. William DeWord, his reporting partner Sakharissa Cripslock, and their photographer vampire Otto von Schrieck all make cameos in later Discworld works, but they're not terribly important movers and shakers on the disc outside of this book, where they put together the Ank Warpork Times. Some minor details of worldbuilding are established in the truth, such as the Guild of Engravers, the Guild of Shoemakers and Leatherworkers, and the dwarvish custom of buying yourself out of your family when you come of age, repaying your parents the cost of raising you. But the only one of these details that is really important for later books is Harry King, King of the Golden River. Harry started out as a simple mudlark, before building a small empire from a simple operation. Harry collects the piss and shit of the city for a reasonable fee, then sells the collected waste to alchemists and farmers, thus generating a profit at both ends. As with most historical examples of this operation, Harry has become quite wealthy, but he is unwelcome in high society due to the nature of his business, as well as his constant stench. Now, if you don't know what a mudlark is, or their role in Victorian-era waste disposal, well, <laughs> neither did I until this book. But Pratt's loving description of Harry King's backstory and role in Ink Warfork got me interested in learning. And if you read the truth, you will probably walk away with at least some interest in learning about newspaper operations and history. 
This is clearly a subject near and dear to Sir Terry's heart. He did, after all, get his start working for a local newspaper, and at this point in his career he could sell just about anything to an audience. So it makes sense that at this stage in Discworld we would get a story like Cerebus, where a simple plot serves as a means of educating the audience on a special interest of the author, with character complexity and thematic depth taking a backseat. Mind you, this doesn't mean that the truth doesn't have anything to say. What does the truth have to say? Well, well, most of the truth is spent on detailing the ink morpork Times operations, you know, how their reporters get their scoops, how their paper gets its funding and audience, how photographs and prints are developed. There is still time spared to discuss what role a newspaper should play in society, which, admittedly, is something that sets it apart from Cerebus. While Dave Sims certainly grew to be more socially conscious as his comic series went on, the early Cerebus arcs are light on theme, with the latter ones simply having Sim himself lecture the reader on his intended message with lengthy appendices. Pratchett is, as you might have guessed, a little bit subtler than that. While it's clear that the truth has an axe to grind, it tends to be ground through character action instead of outright tracked. William DeWord starts out as an idealistic youth who believes the role of a newspaper should be to spread the truth to the people of the world. However, as the practicalities of actually running said newspaper set in, he starts to realize the shortcomings of such a vision. While the truth is undoubtedly important, the simple fact is that no one can care about all the truth that exists in this world. If people are concerned with the truth, it's usually only within their spheres of influence and knowledge, the truth that affects their daily lives and needs. And again, that's only if they are concerned with it. To many people, comforting lies are far preferable, as William soon learns when the Guild of Engravers' rival newspaper starts to outsell the Ink World War Times, despite the former simply making up certain stories. No matter how passionate a teacher you are, you will only get so far if your students are apathetic, and I think you all have been keeping up with Discworld long enough to realize that most people are just that, apathetic. However, even if the vast majority of your students don't care about your carefully crafted lessons, if just one student who is passionate about learning manages to learn because of you, you'll have made a positive impact. And so, while William learns to temper his idealism with practicality, he doesn't lose it completely. Maybe only one reader of the Ink Morebrook Times will do something good with the truth, but even that one reader will have made the newspaper's work worth it. And with that in mind, William and his crew continue their quest for the truth. Final Verdict Whenever a creator gets big enough that their name itself becomes a selling point, it's not uncommon for said creator to create deeply self-indulgent works. And critics tend to mock these works because they are so self-indulgent. They don't have anything to offer outsiders or newcomers, and are really only there to appease the diehard fans. The truth does fall prey to this phenomenon somewhat, like I said, the story is basically just an embellished textbook on newspapers, but Pratchett, like William at the end, is well aware that not everyone will want to read the truth, and so he makes sure to inject enough laughs and gaffs to keep the mood light and breezy. If the truth is a textbook, it's certainly a digestible one, enough for me to give it a 7 out of 10. And Professor Terry knows that, even if most of his audience won't take to his lesson, at least one student will. And if the truth can have that positive impact on a single life, then, like most teachers, I think Sir Terry would be happy with that. In the meantime, I'm Marco Keen, signing off, and I hope you liked this video. If you did, and you would like to see me make more, please leave a like or comment down below, share my video via Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or the means, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you all, and I will see you in the next one.